guys, welcome back to Talking in Isolation. I'm your host, Jay, and let's get right into it. As you can see, I've been trying to grow out a goatee because, well, even in isolation, it gets pretty boring around here and I want to try something new. Now, please, please remember that you can send questions through this YouTube video in the comments section or anywhere else if you want to ask anything. And remember, my part is talking about you guys. Now today, I got a very interesting thing from a friend of mine. Back during the time we would hang out, even in isolation, just over the phone and everything, we tried to talk about what we would do in our free time. Now, mostly it was about playing video games, doing puzzles and stuff. But one thing that interests me, and I think would interest everyone else, is what we read. You see, every book has a genre. You know, fantasy, realistic, documentary, adult fiction, steampunk, all that stuff is interesting. But what I found out that is very niche is one form. You see, I have a friend who, during isolation, he was very, very bored. And I found out he got into a specific genre of reading. Now, the genre which can only be described as, well, reincarnation and summoning is many of the things he read were about being summoned or reincarnated into a different world. Now, many of you will think that's boring and everything, but I want to look into a deeper perspective of it. You see, when I asked him and he told me about it, I thought, why would someone want to read that specific genre? So I did some research and here is what I found out. Now, the Japanese actually have a certain word for this genre. It's called Isekai. It pretty much means to be reincarnated or summoned into a different world other than the one that you're from. Now, that leads onto a two pretty important point. The difference between summoning and reincarnation. To look at it like this, you can see it as a person's preference into what they want that they can never have. The idea of a fantasy world is there aren't any rules from our previous world. Now, there are obviously some like, you know, don't murder each other and, you know, don't commit crimes and stuff, at least in some books. But what you have to look at is what we can't get in this world. In this world, everything's normal. We can go get a job, we have taxes, we can hang out with friends, we don't have to worry about monsters. The only really animalistic worries are stuff we might find in the bush, snakes, spiders, and sometimes the occasional, you know, angry animal depending on the country you're in. But in the fantasy world, it's usually about mythical beasts, chimeras, hydras, uh, the gorgons. Gorgons are like what Medusa was, except without the stone part. Um, what you have to look at is people want, as I said before, people want what they can't have. And in the fantasy world, all those rules are broken down. In the fantasy world, we can have magic, we can have sword fighters, we can have careers we could never have in this world being an adventurer, going out and exploring, clearing dungeons. All this stuff is stuff that's out of reach from us. We can play it in video games, we can read it in book, but to actually do it is something that's very, very much out of our reach. And many of you can argue, hey, with VR, virtual reality, we can get and get a feel for it when those games come out. But the thing you have to remember is we can never truly get it. We can never experience it. As soon as you take off the headset, it's all gone. And because of that, we can never ever truly embrace it. And I think that's something that pulls people towards that kind of genre, the esekai, Japanese. But the thing I looked at is there is a deeper meaning as well, especially in what I talked about before, the two different types. When you look at summoned to another world, I believe that's looking at someone who wishes they could retain their current memories or retain what they want to retain, their body, their personality and everything, and be able to experience something different. They might have something that they're not happy or not, you know, expressible, but in the long run, they want to go there. They want to leave their current world and they want to explore a possibility as they are. People who usually go towards this side are people who put it in the simplest terms, 
want to experience something without missing anything of themselves. They want to know that they have the skills they currently have and they can go and use them. This is for, for the people who work hard and want skills that they've developed. Now, the other hand though, reincarnation, the thought that after you die, you get to restart from level one, restart the entire thing over. This is more looking at people who either have a hard life or want to become someone entirely different. Books that usually look at that are the ones that they want to change how they are. They might want a different hairstyle, they might want a different look, they don't want to be tied down with past, past experiences. Many people like this in books start off as, well, babies and stuff. Or if they reincarnated, they could start off as entirely different people. The idea is that it all starts all over again. They have no ties, no chains, nothing. They can have a new family, they can have a new experience. If you've had a hard family that was always forcing you to train, this new idea allows you to start completely over. But there's also a third thing that not many think about. You see, throughout all these different things, the idea is that they know that they've been reincarnated or they've been summed to another world. And the idea behind that is memory. In all the ones I researched, the, I, the possibility of them remembering who they are is near a perfect 100. Because the problem is with Isekai, they have knowledge about the previous world, aka Earth where we live now. The problem with this is, if they start from one, just completely start anew, and they had no prior knowledge, that would change the book from Isekai to just normal fantasy. Now, many of you might think, what's a problem with this? Well, that the thing is, the entire term Isekai, the entire term of this visionary idea, is that you need memory and knowledge about where we are now. So the entire genre revolves around the memory of Earth. The main problem with this is the Sekai books aren't extremely different from each other. If you look at them fundamentally, they're basically the same with story elements making them different. You can't get anything original out of it because people know. There are different books like, if any of you have read Scholarly Pleasant, you know that that's a normal, the normal Earth, the normal world, but we find a different part of it. That's not a Sekai, but that is unique and it adds magic and everything. The thing that makes that unique is we're taking the already known world and we're injecting something different into it. The problem with a Sekai is we take the normal world, throw it away, and add a new, entirely different world. And even if you make that world unique and everything, the problem is the memory of Earth can always impact it. To tell you another example, I talk about Skullduggery Pleasant, which is our world with magical elements put into it. Look at Lord of the Rings. That has no memory of Earth, no idea about where we are, and makes a completely different fantasy world with no ties to it. Thanks to that, we they have no trouble with doing anything they want, because the idea of Earth and the idea of the limitation Earth proposes aren't there. So they can go in any direction they want. Back to the topic at hand. As I've talked about, SRKI allows us to escape from reality. But what parts? Because from the research I did, there are a few fundamental parts that we are freed from in the SRKI genre. First of all, the idea of family. In Isekai's, if the main character has a family, most of the time they're going to be completely different to what we think. They're either going to be very loving, caring, or they're going to be very harsh and hating. There's never an in-between. There's never a normal family that's always happy and always, sad. like, you know, media. Sorry. That means that then sometimes happy, sometimes sad, emotions take them over. No, in Isekai's, they're usually extremely into one point. They're either very loving, very careful, very controlling, 
all are very angry. There's no middle line. The thing with this is, it wants to make sure we, as the readers, get a fundamental look at what the person has to go through. We know that they're from Earth, and they have memories from Earth, so that's going to affect them. But what's interesting is the fact that their parents will always throw them a curveball. Now, the thing is though, when they aren't, when they're summoned to another world, or when they're reincarnated and they don't have anyone looking after them, that makes an entirely new thing because they're entirely dependent on those past memories to help them. What some of you might not know is that the idea of, as I've said, the idea of Earth does play a massive role in the story. But what it can also do is make the person dependent on it in said story. When in reality, the reason people make it set guys is to escape from it. People will be like, I would love to be in another world where I could do this, this and that. But the fact of the matter is, if you were born in that other world, you might not live as long, and you might actually dream of being on a planet like Earth. You see, many stories that I've read in my research tell me that the idea of Earth and the idea that, you know, we can be reincarnated and we can have all this fun adventure, the only reason it's fun is because we know about the boringness of where we are now. I wake up, I have breakfast, I'll go out, I'll work, maybe play a game or two, come home, relax, you know, it's all the same. You either go to work, you have fun, you eat, you rest, blah, blah, blah. Those are the four main massive things. In a different world though, those four things might not exist. You might still have work and sleep, but you also have survival of monsters, looking at different magics, which can be counted as work. It completely changes from work where you might, like me, stand behind a bar or go to sets to a place where you have to try and survive hunt for resources, all that stuff. They come two completely different things while using the same title. Like how Sekai represents reincarnation or summoning, same title, but different experiences. Now, the importance about remembering all this is we have to look at why it's interesting to certain people. I've stated why certain parts of it are made as it is, but I haven't discussed why a person is drawn to them. Now, it could just be a normal thing. You enjoy the genre, you like the idea of fantasy, but there can be a darker tone to it. And while I'd rather not talk about it, it's a question, and as I said, anything you guys want me to talk about, I'll talk about. I won't beat around the bush, and I'll go straight for it. What I think is, while there are people who generally enjoy it and just love a good book, there are those people that want to because they want to escape from something. I really hope this isn't true, but I have to say it just because it's part of my research. Many people want what they can't have. And while many people think it's adventure, fun, you know, all that, there are darker times. They might want to escape from something of a family or they want to escape from bullies and such. Or they want the idea that in a Sekai, a person can be overly strong and overly powerful and people don't pick on them. But that might not always be the case here where sometimes you just don't have the strength to fight on. So just, you know, if someone talks about it, listen, see how they react to it. See if they're joyful and everything, or if they're longing for something. That's the thing about books. Depending on what a person reads, you can understand them. I've met people who became my best friends because I just found another single book they read. When I was younger, I met a guy who just read Moby Dick and we became great friends because he wanted that longing of adventure and finding something that was unreal and I thought that was amazing. The genre of Isekai can offer many things. On to a, another point, the idea of Isekai is that they all sometimes, most of the times, have one thing called the cheat ability. Now, Isekais with this kind of genre aren't exactly rare. They're really quite obvious, and to be honest, many of them have it. The idea is when they're summoned or reincarnated into another world, they have a cheat-like ability that doesn't disappear. It makes it too either too easy for them or gives them a leg up over everyone else. 
for example. I remember reading one when I was doing this that talked about a guy who had the ability to have unlimited power, speed, strength, and everything, which I thought would make the book very repetitious. I mean, if he can have, you know, perfect everything, isn't that going to be boring? And why would I want to read it? I already know how it's going to end. He's going to just win, win, and win. But when I researched it up, it was one of the best sellers in Japan, and even people from America, Australia, other countries thoroughly enjoy it. The reason behind it being that even though he had unlimited everything, his memories from Earth made him very struggle against the very idea of being overpowered, since on Earth, He's, a, he's shown to be very weak and southerly. The idea is that the cheat item, when introduced correctly, gives them a way out, but they still start, struggle to take it, even if it seems like the easiest choice in the world, because of their past memories. Another cheat item that I remember reading about was about a boy who had the cheat ability. Let's see, what was a good one? Oh yes, he had a helper, a guardian. This cheat ability allowed someone that he could always talk to to help him through hard times. Now, this one wasn't as well received as the OP cheat skill, but the interesting thing is he always had someone to talk to, which people thought was good because on Earth he was known as a loner, a shut-in, or as the Japanese would call it, a neat, which is pretty much someone who doesn't like to go out and just stays inside and plays video games all day. Someone who doesn't like to leave their room and rather for their safety of knowing what you can know and in a place that you feel familiar with. The idea behind this was that because he had someone to talk to, he wasn't going to be as lonely as he always is. And he wasn't going into a world unknown because he had someone there to guide him through it. Like how in many video games there's always a tutorial that introduces you to the mechanics of the game. He had someone to help him, which many people would like in life. Someone to just help them get into things. But there is another thing. There are books where people aren't born with cheat abilities, and that brings on a very different kind of feeling for the book. A person who has to work hard in a new world. They may have been treated badly in their old one, they have to work even harder in their new one because they don't have any safety net. And even if they're described as having been beaten, starved, treated horribly in the last world, the fact of the matter is, they did have a place they could escape to, even for a few minutes. When you're in another world, you have no safety net. You have no s place to escape to. Which is interesting. It's good, it's fun, but it is interesting in the idea of that. I feel like books like that appeal to people who want to try and overtake hardship. Become stronger. And I feel like that's an amazing genre, an amazing look at it because we all go through trials in our lives and the idea of going to an entirely different new world for an entirely new self trials where in this world we might have struggled with but in that world we have an entirely new slate i feel like that's interesting and something we should all look at now a final point is you shouldn't take my word for it on how i feel about set guys personally i enjoy them I think they're a new look and I think they're very, very much enjoyable to watch and experience. But don't take my word for it. You can look them up anywhere online if you want. Look at them up on novels.com if you want. You can look them up on other things. Japanese often make them into comic books. I think they're called mangas. If you want to look at that, if you want an easier time to look at it with pictures and stuff, don't call yourself a baby. You know, everyone has preferences. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, if I can make a recommendation, though, there is a novel that I did read a bit. It's called FFF Rank Hero. I'm not going to advertise it, but if you ever want to look at a book of a guy who remembers Earth, that I would recommend. It goes on long, you can read it online, and I have to say it's a pretty interesting read when I read it. It goes upon the idea of a Sekai, but the idea that you want to return to your normal Earth, which... Honestly, not many of guys talk about. They usually want to just stay in this world of fantasy, but there are a few rare ones where they want to return back to the normal Earth. Many people wonder why, when in reality, we have to remember not everyone wants to be summoned to another world. Some people love to stay in this world, like myself and I think most people, 
And the idea of going to another world seemed preposterous, and even if they were given a chance, they'd say no, because they want the idea of rules. The book kind of looks at that, where this boy doesn't want to be a hero, doesn't want to be in another world, but the only way to return is to fulfill the goal of it. And every time he thinks he gets there, he's shot down. So, to be honest, it's a pretty interesting read, and I highly recommend it, even though I'm not sponsored. And on a down note, if anyone wants to sponsor me, I'm open. <laughs> so, anyway, this is Talking in Isolation, and, oh yeah, quick thing. Some of you have texted me about the idea of the gaming channel, and honestly, I do want to do it, but I don't know how to. If any of you want to, I'm happy to try and open a Discord, look up how to record and stuff. You know, we can all get on our laptops, just play a few games, have a re good recording session, I'm just having some fun. It sounds like a lot of fun, and I think we could all enjoy doing it. So, I will look into trying to see if I can do something like that. We can call it gaming in isolation, if anything, and it could be a break from just talking about people's stories. Um, I think that's all we have time for today. I think I went through everything. If you didn't like this talk, I hope you did. If you want me to talk about anything else, just send it through the email. Uh, if you looked up Moving on TV, you would have seen that I've been linked to it through my Instagram account and everything. Kind of dead at the moment. Made it. But, you know, talking in isolation is all about you guys, so I want to hear from you. Please don't hesitate to ask anything. Remember, as I said in my first video, stupid question, stupid answer. Let's be adult about this. And I hope you guys all have a good rest of the day. And remember, if you're stuck in isolation and you want to talk, I'm here to listen. Have a nice day, guys, and I hope to hear from you all soon. Thank you.